and it's uh, really a uh, really a uh, uh, nice honor to host uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tune Traunik here. He's an uh, entrepreneur and uh, founder of uh, D-Labs, one of the very prominent uh, Slovenian tech company, and uh, he's uh, now very active also in uh, in West. Uh, invest businesses, so he will uh, present us uh, this approach, uh, approach uh, and viewpoint of uh, private investors. So now we had like maybe more like conservative approach, conservative viewpoint from like banker, and now maybe we'll go into more like a flexible funding approach uh, by 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 some investor. So, Dylan, thank you very much for uh, taking your time and. Uh, Please, the, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess, okay, I'm, I'm not muted, cool. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I think we're all sick and tired of, uh, of Zoom meetings and calls. So I'm gonna try to make this session a little bit more uh, a conversation than a presentation, just so we get some more uh, energy out of it. Um, yes, I would like to thank you, uh, thank all, all banks in Slovenia and, and in the European Union and all the legislation that's being passed around those banks and making it harder to get loans because this is just water on the meals of investors. So the more, the, the stricter the banks are, uh, the better life gets for investors. Um, so, you know, as, as, as far as I'm concerned, banks in Slovenia for, for entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs are just an exercise in building a solid enough business plan because banks usually uh, i mean my experience is that uh, if you want to get a loan from a bank uh, they nag you so long uh, that uh, that you finally realize that you don't need a, a loan and that you've solved the problems differently um, maybe that will change someday um okay so yes uh like like the host said uh, like andrash said uh, i am i am an um uh, so my, my background is food science and technology that's uh, relevant now uh, after graduation i spent 12 years in the it industry where i helped build dlabs uh, which is one of the first startup studios in this part of europe uh, we had uh, i mean the, the company is still active i i uh, I'm, I'm now only an advisor to the company but the company, the D-Labs was a company that basically helped uh, entrepreneurs come from idea to products and, and scaling that product, obviously a digital product. So we were like a studio, a startup agency, if you wish, that would create the product you your startup needed uh, as a service. Um, a majority of our clients were actually were actually startups. Uh, we did have a few corporate clients, but majority were, were startups. So we are very attuned and knowledgeable about how the startup investment lifecycle actually looks like. Uh, you know, how can an entrepreneur attract the first angel investors? How you know how how do you do a seed round? You know how do you talk to venture capitals, funds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, if I may do, can I, can I do a show of hands, just a, a, a poll, uh, because I'm not really familiar what you, your, what your background are, but like, uh, has any of you ever done an investment into a startup? Can you, can you raise a hand, either physical or digital, for those of you who have camera off? Okay, so have ever, anybody of you ever um, worked in a company that used investor money? Okay, I see one hand beside me. Okay, so um, th this is just to kind of to adjust the level of uh, how how deep I go into investing. Um, so I imagine you are like, um, you know, you're all part of uh, entrepreneurship support ecosystem and um, you're, you're most interested in how you can uh, help your local ecosystem or your national ecosystem to, to thrive, right? This is something that uh, one of my dear friends here in Kamnik, Tomasz Lach, who is an owner of, uh, of a beverage company also had in mind. He was very interested in, in startups. He was very interested in the, um, in the way startups are funded. And uh, he noticed, like uh, we noticed too in Slovenia on the general, that um, the investment activity of uh, what we call angel investors, so the first tier of 
like I'll, I'll, I'll do a brief overview. So the first, the first, the first people who ever invest in a in a in a in a, in a, in a new uh, company are called angel investors. They typically invest their own money, their own savings. They make they typically invest between let's say twenty thousand euros to hundred thousand euros, uh, and they invest super early. They basically bet on the the person who is asking them for money rather than the idea or the the, the business. Right? They are just you know, I trust you with my twenty k that you'll move this to the next stage. Then after those, they, it comes seed capital. There's several funds that do seed capital investment. That those funds go between, let's say, the, the ticket, uh, the, the investment size of that round is around ranging from, let's say, 200,000 euros to a million euros. Uh, then the next stage, obviously, is the first VC round, so called A round. The A round in Europe is usually between half a million between and, and three million, roughly speaking, and so on and so on. But what we found is that, yes, we do have VC funds in Slovenia and in Europe in Brol. Yes, we do have seed funds, although smaller, smaller amount of them, but we are drastically lacking angel investing activity. So that core, the first piece of, in, the pers- the first piece of uh, investing that's actually uh, required for an entrepreneur to you know, jump into into the, the whole thing with with, with more seriousness and, and turn the hobby uh, in, into his job or into his vision to, 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 to transform it into this career. So uh, I've been collaborating quite a lot recently with the Slovenian uh, Business Angels Group, and I'm sure there's a Business Angel Group in every, basically in every country that you come from. Um, the problem, though, is that uh, business angels are, uh, are, are more established in countries that have a richer background in uh, a richer background in investing. So, for example, Finland uh, has um, uh, t- twice the population of Slovenia, but has about three times as many active angel investors. So what does that mean? Uh, that means that even though that you know Finland has, you know, significantly higher GDP, but not not twice or you know like it is higher, but um, the 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 si- the ticket sizes. So how much money is a an average successful entrepreneur willing to reinvest back into the ecosystem? Is roughly the same. The problem is that uh, the number of entrepreneurs who are willing to what the Americans would call paid forward, right? So they would, you know, share their success to then help the new generation of investors reinvest uh, those funds. Uh, uh, so they reinvest and therefore the whole industry develops um, quicker. Um, the amount of investors who are willing to share, who are willing to invest is low. And what we found upon the research together with Tomash and the uh, business angels that um, it's not actually that people would not want to invest. It's not actually that people would not know, um, would not see opportunities. It's the fact that they don't, uh, they're either scared, afraid, because they have zero experience in investing. Um, a smart investor once said, investing is like, is like being philanthropic, right? If you're not, if, if you're not giving 10% to charity when you when you earn your first thousand euros, it's very likely that you won't be investing the first uh, million euros when you have 10 million euros. So it's some, uh, it's a skill that you have to develop. And uh, Slovenian entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs are lacking that investment skill. They are, they are good at that, 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 that has many, that has many uh, reasons. One reason was that the uh, for a long, long time, uh, the, uh, the interest rate on bank deposits was so high that, you know, if you're happy with it, you're three to 4%, you basically didn't need to take any risk and you would just, you know, your money would just, uh, become more in the bank. Now that's gone. Uh, so people are now looking in other options. Um, but uh, that's not enough. So if you only have money, that's not enough because uh, invest, investing is a, uh, investing is a, uh, so start, investing in startups as an Asian investor is something that is, um, you know, we say one in 10 will succeed. That's absolutely true. Which means that it's high risk. It's also high reward, but it's high risk. And, and uh, m- investors in Slovenia are very, very risk averse. 
So more traditional asset classes like stocks and, and uh, bonds and uh, even real estate are, are preferred. But there's one really important factor that comes with angel investors and which uh, drives angel investor forward. And that is the intrinsic motivation to help others. And uh, the, the more mature our industry is, the more investors are actually uh, deciding that they want to invest, they want to help, and they want, they want to engage in this space. But the big, the big obstacle, obviously, is they don't know how. They don't know where to look for startups. They don't know how the investment works. They don't know how to do it. You know, maybe they tried it once and it went wrong. Um, there is a, is a significant difference between uh, how, you know, classical entrepreneurs think about somebody who has maybe a, you know, a construction company or somebody who has a, uh, let's say, they, they manufacture some specific parts uh, or they, you know, they offer some specific services. So successful entrepreneurs in those businesses, even if they have already uh, merged or acquired another company, the goals of acquisition of that company were quite clear, right? So, so here's my factory. This, this other company has another factory. If I buy them, that factory will mine, the revenues will be mine. You know, I'll have some you know, overhead in terms of uh, merging, but then I'll have some synergies in terms of uh, you know, shared services. Um, but that absolutely doesn't apply with, with startup investing. So for example, one such case is that there's, there's a couple of rules of, of startups in, uh, startup investing for angels. So just to summarize the three most important ones, never take more than 18 to 15% on the first round. So, you know, the first investment into a startup should never be more than eight to 15% of the company. The second rule is only invest in startups that are working in industries you understand or know. So, you know, maybe it's not your exact industry, but maybe it's the adjacent industry that you also know because you kind of collaborate with that industry. So stay only invest in things you understand. And the third, the third thing is, if you win, want to invest, then commit that you'll make at least 10 investments during the next three to five years. This will ensure that the startup uh, risk dynamics start playing uh, with you. So, you know, if you make 10 investments, you can be sure that one of them will make it and be a big success and repay all of those that will die. Uh, soon after or you know, sooner or later when you make the investment. So it's, it's quite a big commitment. It's also a bit of time, but we found that a lot, a lot of investors actually want to do this. So how did we tackle this in our local uh, ecosystem? Um, the, first, the first thing, so you have like, uh, I would call them enlightened angel investors that maybe, you know, had their business abroad, maybe you know, their company was, uh, you know, they, they, they had an economic, uh, economic education and, and, you know, they know what investing. So there's a, there's a bunch of investors that, that already do this and they are mostly locked or not locked, but they're mostly already joined. They joined already the uh, Slovenian Business Angels Club. But the problem was that the most, the best ideas, the most, uh, you know, the, the most propulsive entrepreneurs were actually popping up in, in local entrepreneurship ecosystems, you know, uh, like this guy, Tomasz, with the owner of, of, a, of a food, uh, of a beverage company, right? He noticed that there's, you know, there's this group of, you know, two students that do like this amazing product and he would like to invest, he would like to help them, but he didn't know how. So we got together and five years ago, we, even six years ago, we established what we called a um, so um, our our local so Kamnik is my hometown where I'm at. We established a a um, um, entrepreneur association. How should I call it? This Podetnički club. Please help me translate. But like you know, a, a, a club that that local entrepreneurs would become members of, and then we would use that to exchange ideas and and and. Uh, opportunities and you know experiences etc cetera, etc cetera. and we would have like monthly meetings etc cetera, etc cetera, and you know do you know different stuff investing being one 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 area that was that we had an agenda for but you know that comes later then five years ago so uh one year later uh there was this opportunity and we actually were able to buy off a uh an old building that was part of a former ammunition factory 
Um, and we said, okay, so we're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna get together. Uh, the, 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 the cost of the building was, you know, something like a hundred thousand euros, but we said, okay, so we, we're gonna buy this building and make it into a entrepreneurship hub in, in Kamnik. We didn't have any EU funded hubs, uh, you know, uh, like there are in multiple places. So we, need, we needed a place. Once we had that place established, um, we saw that we can attract a lot of new talent into that space to work there, to 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 stay, you know, to to explore there, to to be educated. So we had a we had a program running. But the the most important step we did, we actually launched a small investment fund. So again, we back we went back to our club members and said, "Look, guys, I know investing is hard." And it's difficult and you're probably you know wondering how is this all going uh, how how this works and i i don't want to take such risks so we said look we are raising about a 50 to 60 000 euro fund which we'll use to do like the early early super early investments of about you know 10 to 30k to help local or not not just local but help startups that will ask for funding in our our hub uh, amazingly, people reacted and we were able to raise 60,000 euros for that initial, initial fund. And we assembled a uh, investment committee uh, that is comprised of um, three classical entrepreneurs and three startup entrepreneurs. So we act as a counterparts. Um, and uh, we, we then you know, set up a form that uh, potential investees fill out and we talk to them so it's like a regular fund it's organized in in the format of a limited liability company uh, apparently uh, not every eu country allows that form of uh, company to invest as 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 uh, frequently as we do slovenia also has some restrictions but for now you can still do a micro fund so it's it, this is not a proper this is not a, pro a proper uh, fund, but it's a micro fund. It's actually a, a LLC that kind of buys shares in other companies. And that's, a, that's something that, that is legal in the Slovenian uh, legal framework. Um, so we use this the, because this, uh, we, this way of organizing has very little overhead. We have uh, a CEO, obviously, but he's not professional. And we have the investment committee and there's some uh, accountant. So the cost of running this fund is extremely low. It's like we're talking about maybe 3000 euros per year to run the fund, which is, which is nuts compared to some other proper funds. Uh, and we managed to do four investments in the first year of its existence. We had many problems. You know, we couldn't decide quickly enough and invest in and founders would go elsewhere. Uh, we would invest uh, based on um, you know, just a shiny presentation and we didn't uh, check deeply enough the startup. So we made some mistakes. Um, one, of, one of the mistakes was also that we were, uh, especially the classical entrepreneurs were too pushy when it comes to reporting. They were expecting the results too soon. And one of the investments actually returned us the money. She said, I'm not, you know, I'm not dealing with you guys. You, you're too much trouble for the money you gave me. He gave us the whole investment back. Um, and we're like, okay, so that was, uh, that was wrong, but nevertheless, we had until now we had two successes. One was actually quite a big success. One was a medium success. Um, uh, a cosmetics company actually offered us to buy bear, buy back our share. So now the fund is actually bigger. It's hundred K euros. What's more important though, is that in the process, there's there's about twenty shareholders in this uh, acceler in this uh, fund. What's more important is that those shareholders were familiarized with the way how angel investing works. They know you know what the, what the term sheet is. They know they didn't have any right. They didn't have any word in deciding how you know which in which company we're going to invest or not but they were well informed. So for every investment, we said, okay, so this is the term sheet we gave them. These are the conditions, la, 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 la. And there's obviously a, like a, you know, by, um, you know, every six months, there's a report that goes out to all the, all the investors and says, oh, even not just to the investors, but to the whole, uh, to the whole uh, entrepreneurship club. And uh, the, the feedback was, the first of, firstly, the feedback was amazing. You know, we have huge support. The second, uh, there, uh, there has been um, 
10 investments now, uh, not from the fund, but from people who invested in fund, they recognized an idea that could be funded in the same way and they did their, their same. So it, the, the fund actually worked as a sort of an um, educational vehicle for the investors. To, so we went from having zero angel investors in Kamnik to now having about 20 active angel investors uh, actively seeking, looking out, uh, and, and uh, in the in total, you know, we uh, last time we counted, it was like 15, uh, 15 new jobs created, and something like a two x return on the total, uh, on, if we count in all the investments that were now made. So it was this really great mechanism to basically um, boost um, local investment uh, activity that then had a, uh, uh, like a ripple effect uh, across multiple uh, multiple tiers right so for example we were invited to be one of the lectures so slovenian invest uh, slovenian entrepreneurship fund actually recognized this activity as crucial and they invited us to be the lecturer in their um, uh, angel investing school uh, that they are, that we now uh, have deployed across slovenia so we had 10 lectures across Slovenia where uh, we would actually um, motivate and educate local uh, entrepreneurial uh, clubs or just you know uh, entrepreneurs from an area about how how to do angel investing and how what they what the results are so uh, that that's one letter of recognition the fund actually grew I don't know how we're gonna uh, double almost double the value of the fund next year and I guess this was just luck but still, the the value of the the value that was uh, really created was the the fact that now we have twenty plus active investors looking and willing to do investments in 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 a town of about fifteen thousand inhabitants, which is, for me at least, it's 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 amazing because you know in the current situation, basically every entrepreneur that steps into the uh, our local hub, if they have a great idea, I'm quite sure. I'm going to be able to find them a, a mentor and an investor within the hometown, which increases the likelihood of success immensely. Because in our experience, the closer you are uh, with the investor in the beginning, the better your chances of survival are. The best is if you can talk like in person, you know, every other day about the problems you have. There's no meetings. There's no, you know, just you just drop by for a coffee, you know, go over the things, and and you go you you go you go you know back to your to your work so yeah with this i would conclude my presentation and i'm open for questions